Okay, folks. So the next thing we want to look at is how uh, OpenRefine and specifically something called regular expressions um, can help us do analyses that we really wouldn't be able to do with something like Microsoft Excel. Specifically, we're going to look at this through uh, the lens of kind of collecting like data. Uh, so similar data um, that uh, might then again, not share um, all of the same identifiers. So how can I be a bit more concrete about this? Let's look at stage start station ID and I'm gonna look at the name now, right? Because let's say, for example, I wanted to do something like find out um, how many city bike stations there were on a particular street. Um, in this case, I'm gonna take the example of Central Park West. And what you'll notice is that when I do the text facet on start station name, I get very consistent results, it seems. Um, you know, I can easily see okay, First Avenue, First Avenue, First, first Avenue um, going all the way down. Uh, if I scroll down here, this is, uh, this is by default sorted by name, so it's alphabetical. I can see, okay, Central Park South, Central Park West, Central Park West, Central Park West, right? Now, a couple of things I wanna highlight here. One, most of these say Central Park West, but this one for some reason says Central Park W. Um, that's gonna be a problem because the names aren't quite the same. And very often I wanna be able to have the naming be consistent in order to do things like uh, collect things together, right? So um, if I were in Microsoft Excel, this would actually be a huge problem. You can see by the number to the right here that there are 222 rows that say Central Park W and West 96th Street. Um, in Excel, I would have to sort find those cells and replace them all manually, which at the very least would be a big pain. Here, I have this amazing function, if I click edit, and it's mass editing, okay? So now, if I go in here and make a change and click apply, all of a sudden, all 222 of those rows are updated. That is a huge help, right? Because very often when we get data, it's a little bit different with this data set, but very often data sets uh, have entries that are made by humans. Humans make errors, we all do, um, and particularly spelling mistakes. And so what can happen is we it can be hard to get a clear view of the data because there are little differences in spelling and things like that um, that make it hard to sort of see what chunks of the data belong together sensibly, right? So I've done that and it seems like, okay, you know, not a big deal. If I wanted to know how many stations are on Central Park West, well, I can just kind of, you know, scan through and look, right? I could add these all up. In fact, I can use include here. And if I just wanted to have them all in here, right? This is how many trips, right? We're taking from Central Park West. Obviously, this isn't the number of stations per se. It's the number of trips. Okay, so I could do this. I could include them all. I'm, you know, it's going to do a running count for me of the matching rows. So, you know, not so bad, right? It's getting up and getting up and count. Um, but here's the trick. What if not all of them are there? So one of the things about this is, and I actually, this is, uh, would be some good background research to do. I'm not sure how they decide which part of the street corner uh, goes first and which goes second. So we see Central Park West and West 100th Street, right? Um, the question is, does Central Park West appear in any other places? And in fact, big surprise, I've done a scan ahead of time, it turns out that if I come down to the Wests, I'm gonna find an entry here that is West 106th Street and Central Park West. Now, I found this, I actually didn't find this by scanning, but um, I found it by using the tool that I'm about to show you, um, just to demonstrate why this is so valuable. So here, it's still on Central Park West, but for whatever reason, and again, we should look this up, um, the, the station name begins with West 106th Street. So the question is, is there a way for me to find all of the, the trips that start at a station uh, somewhere on Central Park West, right? Doing this manually would mean visually scanning 573 choices, right, to make sure that I wasn't missing any. Fortunately, we have this amazing feature in, um, in OpenRefine, which is regular expressions. Now, as I've noted previously, regular expressions are available in all programming languages. They are not really available in Microsoft Excel in a useful way, um, but they are available to us in Refine. So what I could do is use this, these uh, regular expressions to uh, identify all of the stations, all of the trips that have a start station on Central Park West. 
And the reason why is because it is a pattern matching uh, uh, function is what is what they provide. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is I'm just going to select a handful of the um, of the sample stations because. Uh, like, so I know that I want my, my regular expression to match these stations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to create a new, um, in order to apply the regular expression, I need to generate a new column. And the column is going to contain the output of that regular expression. And that regular expression is going to say, is, does Central Park West appear somewhere in the start station name? So on start station name, I'm going to say edit column, and I'm going to say add column based on this column. Okay, so if we look at this right away, I'm going to say, I'm going to just call this has underscore CPW, right? Just one of the abbreviations for Central Park West sometimes. So right away, what we can see is value, right, is the contents of the cell. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to match the contents of those, that cell with the phrase Central Park West. So um, I have looked it up. Right, so I know that this is the, the name of the function. So I'm going to say value.match. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do in here in order to indicate now, this is specific to Google Refine in the format of the regular expression, but not in the uh, fact of the regular expression. So in, in Google Refine, I use two slashes to indicate that what I want to use is a regular expression, right? I'm not looking for an individual. Like I could, I could try saying Central Park West and West 102 Street and see if I got that. Doesn't seem to really do much. Maybe if I put it in quotation marks, right? Oh, there we go. Okay. So I could put the whole value in there, and the way that it indicates a match is with this empty brackets, which is weird. Um, if it doesn't match, we see the null, okay? So I could do that, but that is only gonna help me find a single station name, which isn't useful, because obviously I could just use the faceting for that, what's the point, right? I could use the sorting and faceting. So instead, I wanna say, all right, what I wanna use here is a regular expression, and I indicate that with these forward slashes, and now I have to, first of all, identify which part is important. So this is, again, a little bit like mathematical equations, where when I want to group things together, I'm going to use round parentheses. So in this, I'm going to say central, actually, I don't need the quotation marks anymore. I'm going to say central park west, right? That's the part I care about. Now I'm still getting a null. Why is that? Well, the thing about regular expressions is that they are very powerful, but they're also very uh they're also very particular. They want you to account for every single character that could possibly appear. So how are we gonna do this? Well, the fact is that I'm interested in, in knowing every single station ID where Central Park West appears, right? But I don't care what comes before or after it, right? I just wanna know if Central Park West is in there somewhere, right? So it could be at the beginning, could be at the end, and doesn't matter to me. Now, the way that I kind of indicate this, right, is I'm going to use a combination. So um, I'm going to use a combination uh, which is dot asterisk. Now dot asterisk in regular expression languages, the dot or the period stands for any character. It means any character you want. Just put it here, right? Um, so that is going to help me say, look, I don't care what comes before it. Um, but I wanted to have Central Park West. And the reason for the asterisk is the asterisk is, is actually a count. And what the asterisk means is zero or more times. So the way that I would read this in English is to say, give me a regular, I'm applying a regular expression in which any character appears zero or more times. And then I have Central Park West, right? And then I wanna say, and then that can be followed by any character zero or more times, right? Because again, I don't care if it's at the beginning or if it's at the end. Now this is great because it seems like it's matching my test data here, um, but there is, but I don't really want it to say Central Park West. I want it to say something uh, more useful like um, true or false, right? If it has, since I've titled my column has CPW, I'm gonna use another function in Google that's available in Google Refine called is not null. 
And again, anytime I have a function, I need to wrap the thing that goes inside it in round parentheses, also known as our argument. Um, and now I can see that I'm getting true, and I'm getting true for all of these things. Now, it seems like I should just be able to say, okay, do this. Here's a trick about OpenRefine though, and although this may seem frustrating at first, it is actually an advantage, which is that if you notice over here, before I started to add this column, I had, uh, I had sub-selected a handful of the start station names, mostly the ones with Central Park West in them, before applying this filter, uh, before applying this regular expression. Now, um, I would describe OpenRefine as what we might call stateful. Um, this is a term used in web technologies uh, and other places, and basically what it means is that it is paying attention to what is sort of on screen at any given point in time. So the issue here is that I have said add a column based on start station name, but I have done that with only some of the station names selected. So if I want to apply this to the entire column, to all of my rows, I actually need to make sure I'm going to copy this value out, I'm going to cancel it, and I want to make sure that I'm actually don't have any filters on, don't have any facets on when I apply this. Because if I have those facets on, it's only going to apply it to the rows that are currently showing, that are currently part of the facet. So uh, if that is a little bit hard to follow at the moment, don't worry too much about it. But basically the point is, is that anything I want to apply to my entire data set, I need to do that without any facets on, right? So I can actually just remove those altogether. So now if I say start station name, I'm going to go back, I'm going to say add column based on this column. I have copied my value. And now I can see, look, that I'm getting falses where I expect falses. I'm going to still rename this as CPW, okay, and click OK and see what happens. And now this will give me a way if I facet on this, if I say text facet, and I will see that I have true in 1647 trips. And most importantly, if I go through here, I see that I've caught stations like West 82nd and Central Park West, as well as the ones that begin with Central Park West. So hopefully this starts to give you a clue of why regular expressions are so powerful and important, because otherwise doing something like that would actually be really, really challenging. Um, so it lets us select um, data from within a larger chunk of data, usually a string, right, usually a, a named thing, um, and find points of commonality. Um, and we can use this on actually any kind of data. Um, it will always treat it as a string, but we could do it on dates, for example, if we wanted to know um, everything that, you know, came between uh, to two particular dates, right? We tried to do a date facet here and it wasn't really, it didn't really work very well. Um, so how might we do that? Um, so that's regular expressions, um, really, really powerful. We will also look at regular expressions in Python. Um, uh, but this is just to give you a brief intro. So when we come back, I'm going to highlight one other feature of, um, of Open or fine that again, really powerful, really good for time saving and reproducibility. Um, and then talk about a couple more things and uh, we'll be all set.